Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows and movies. Today, I will be going over episode 6 of WandaVision. But before I get into the breakdown, if you like the content that I'm creating, please, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. If you haven't seen WandaVision and don't want its anything revealed to you so I, this is your warning and suggestion to pick another video but please do come back after you're caught up with the episode so in all honesty i didn't get the opening sequence um not until the the the, the show actually started and the camera panned to the twins and then the twins started talking to the camera that my mind made the association with Malcolm in the middle. Uh, I thought, you know, obviously Malcolm in the middle was a huge hit. I wasn't into it, uh, or I didn't seek it out. Sometimes it would just come on the, the TV I was, as I was uh, changing channels, and maybe I would watch a couple of minutes of an episode here and there, but that opening scene in WandaVision for, for episode six was so, recognizable that my mind instantaneously almost like oh this is malcolm in the middle or they're they're playing on malcolm in the middle and i thought oh that was an interesting choice i don't know why they chose malcolm in the middle with so many shows that were probably more popular during that time or maybe i'm just wrong maybe it was just that popular that more people got it yeah i didn't i in all like i said in all honesty i didn't get that that opening sequence until the show actually started so obviously this is the Halloween episode. This episode has been so promoted or highly promoted for a long time. I remember seeing, or maybe it's just my memory playing tricks on me, but I think that some of these pictures from this episode were the ones that were released early on, even before this series started, but I might be wrong. But this was a highly anticipated episode and we, as the shows have been being released, we've all kind of assumed that this episode here was going to be where everything was revealed. As far as that, I think we were a little bit disappointed, but I feel we definitely are speeding up to to, to it. It's obviously three episodes left. How, how much more can they tease us before the payoff has to happen, right? But I enjoyed it nonetheless. I enjoyed the costumes, the seeing Wanda and Vision in their comic accurate depictions. Wanda's was more probably accurate as Vision's was inspired by would, would be a better uh, definition for it. But I enjoyed seeing it, uh, seeing them kind of in that retro outfit. And obviously we see the twins in their retro outfits and same thing with Quicksilver. And just on a side note, I still think the Quicksilver that we're seeing here is the same Quicksilver that we di that died in Age of Ultron. And I felt this episode try to tie that in even more. I, I, I might be completely wrong. Uh, I know people are, are saying it's the the X-Men, Quicksilver, and hey, I, I hope there's that kind of a weird adaptation, even though I don't really think so, just because it would be too much retrofitting on Kevin Feige's part, but that's just my opinion, and, I, and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm completely wrong on this, and the majority opinion is that he somehow is connected to that universe and Wanda somehow, or whoever is, is somehow bringing this person from that universe into this universe. And I, again, I'm not convinced of that. I just think it's a, a simple recasting and they're playing on that trope. They're playing on that, you know, cause that, that happens a lot. How many times, I mean, a lot of the actors that we saw on uh, season one, they weren't major actors, but they were definitely notable actors in Game of Thrones were recasted later on. I mean, the the mountain is one of them. It, uh, and I think the episode one, 
or uh, season one, he was just a tall, skinny looking dude. And then they ended up recasting him with, oh, I can't remember, Bjorn. I can't, I'm, 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 I think it's Bjorn, but I'm sure I'm butchering his name. But that huge guy that ended up playing the mountain, the mountain for, I think, four, four plus seasons. Uh, so it happens all the time. We've seen them on sitcoms all the time. Like they went re recasted Aunt Vib in uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So there's, it just happens all the time. And I think that because, you know, obviously Marvel owns X Men, if Kevin Feige is betting on the fact that, hey, I'm going to bring, I'm going to try to bring this popular Quicksilver from another universe, but just adapt them to. The Quicksilver that he, they, they already had in Age of Ultron and tie him in that way so that whatever happens we end up having that Quicksilver that we enjoyed in X-Men but living the life of the the MCU version I get it it's it, a lot of people don't like that it's like, oh it cheapens the I'm, but what do you want I mean He's uniting, you know, this is, this is what's happening. He's, he's combining, not stories, he, he's combining popularly saying, okay, this actor here portrayed it so well, and he has such a following that I want to adapt that Quicksilver and put him in mind, and then just build off of that. He's taking a gamble, I get it, because again, I don't think he's going to go that X-Men route. I don't think he's going that X-Men route. And again, I think this episode further that thought in me that it's not the X-Men Quicksilver. It's just the MCU Quicksilver that died in Age of Ultron. And the dialogue kind of went there. But again, I could be wrong. But getting back to the video, I thought that it, the interaction that for the first full episode I've seen of him with the cast and Wanda and Vision, I thought it was great. I mean, everybody else is kind of new to to us as far as the characters. You know, obviously we're familiar with with the FBI agent from Ant-Man and, you know, Darcy from Thor and all that stuff. But everyone else, we're still, we're still getting familiar. But we definitely know him. And I, I already paid homage to him in my <laughs> review video. So... If you want to hear what I think about the actor that's playing Quicksilver, you could go ahead and check out that video. I'll try to link the video if I can, but I'm still getting familiar with all this stuff. So, But uh, I like the fact that they went, there was a scene before we went away and to cut to a different scene where uh, Quicksilver and one of the twins went into their comic accurate costumes and I thought was pretty dope. Uh, so I enjoyed that whole first sequence. It was it was cute. The, it was written correct. It was written good. We see oh, we saw Vision coming down obviously, and Wanda had a plan that they were gonna get, kind of, uh, have a thing as a family. But Vision was on on a different thing, and this is building off of the last episode where he where he's starting to ask questions he's becoming or not even the last episode just throughout the whole series he's he, he's trying to become self-aware he's trying to figure out what's going on and i'm assuming the way he came down and, and super excited he knew that this day on halloween he would be able to roam around the the city free and the way he, stu he stood up to Wanda was very, like, I was proud of him. And you could see kind of, and we're going to go into a little bit of uh, mental health here. It's, we, we kind of have this uh, possessive, narcissistic Wanda keeping this, you know, vision under her thumb. And it was almost a empowering to see him stand up to her and when he said well oh you know you didn't tell me what well, Wanda tells him hey you didn't tell me you wanted to go out and and do your own thing because that's what Vision wanted to do he wanted to do his own thing and and Vision was like well I'm telling you now and maybe it's just me in my weird way I found that I was like oh good for him like look at him standing up to to her like letting 
you know, like a bully or like a narcissist. I enjoyed that and I was like, good for him. You know, he's standing up to her and, and not taking her bullying and he's going to go do his, he's going to wander the town and figure this stuff out because he wants to help. You know, there's something wrong and he just wants to help apparently. And it was fun to see that and you definitely saw that. So once that was it, we cut over to the sword facility right outside of of where Wanda has her hex energy, as as uh, Darcy says it. And everything about this scene was annoying. I was mad. I was infuriated. I don't. So okay, I'm, I'm doing a lot of noises without doing any actual words. So the acting director of Sword is 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 getting on my nerves. The way he is disrespecting Rambo after supposedly him and her mother having a, a a relationship, her dying of cancer and still being a dick to her, and I'm sure that there, that's the the writers and producers are doing this to to invoke this attitude from us but i think it's do it's going above like i was it took me away from the story a little bit and i was like wow that's kind of like i don't know if they were tone deaf in that little moment but i don't know for me it was just it, it, it didn't have to go that route and i mentioned it in my in my in just a review video of it that it was just, I didn't get it, and I don't get why he, I mean, they were doing fine, we already knew that he was a bad guy, now to make him, and to cross him over into being full-on dick and disrespectful, and, you know, I guess they want him, they want us to see him dead, so maybe he's gonna die here soon, and we're gonna get a payoff, uh, but I don't know, I was turned off by the way he, his, his attitude was, and then the way he just kicked off Darcy, being that Darcy's the one that's led up to every break that they've had, has been due to Darcy. And, she, and he's like, "Yeah, get all of you out of my out of my camp." And I, in my mind, we're like, "How dumb are you? Like, you're literally kicking your the 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 brains of the operation, regardless of your attitude, because of your ego and pride. In the real world, that wouldn't happen." Darcy would be cradled like no one's business. There would be so many layers to get to her because she would be so prized in any setting because of one, look at her breakthroughs. Look at what her knowledge has led to in this series. So I just found that to just take me away from the story because it's, it's so dumb. It's so, the, his actions are just dumbfounding that they don't make sense why he's doing them so maybe we're gonna get that reveal that he's some undercover scroll or that he there's i don't know i didn't get it so they get escorted out of the facility with three armed guards they they're not armed obviously none of them have weapons at least none that i could see and they they're outside of the facility not that far from where they got kicked out. at least it doesn't seem that way and rambo and I think it's Detective Wu, but I might be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. But they managed to unarm three skilled sword agents, which I'm assuming they are some kind of uh, the same as some kind of top level secret service military force that we have. So you're telling me that a, mind you, Rambo story, backstory, I don't know what kind of training she has. Same thing with our FBI agent. But I am going to assume that the three sword agents, or sword soldiers, I should call them, will be so highly trained. And not only that, have you seen their get-ups when they have these military with their vest on? And all these punches were hurting way too hard, where I, I had the same reaction that Darcy had of surprise when she said why didn't no one tell me the plan because if they told you the plan you would have laughed at the plan because that's how silly that plan was if they would have said yeah we're gonna we're gonna beat you know these three soldiers and and then we're gonna put on ponchos and walk around the camp like nothing's happening that whole scene again irked me the wrong way but it felt rushed it felt compressed it felt like they just ran out of 
of time because they said, hey, this is how many episodes we have. So they, they said, okay, we have, to, we have to force feed this real quick. And this was the episode where everything just led up to, I'm, I'm assuming there's a payoff happening here. At least in the future, I don't think we're going to, we didn't get it in this episode even later on of why his actions or why any of that happened. But maybe again, maybe it's just filler. Maybe it's just me looking too much into it. So after that whole kind of irking scene, we hit back with Wanda and her brother and the twins. And they're literally uh, trick-or-treating. I thought the the whole scene was great. And I, I talked about that in again in my review video. Uh, the whole, but I thought I enjoyed that scene and so they're out trick-or-treating and wanda and her brother start having this dialogue he's basically she starts poking at him asking him like hey do you remember if, you know this from our childhood and then he recognizes right away and he even says that like you're testing me this is where i went back i already went you know i'm not going to go over my rant again but this these interactions not just this one the one later on in the episode I think are telling and they're trying to tell us something maybe not trying to tell us something but implying that this is that that quicksilver that we saw die in age of ultron but anyways if you want to hear my rant just rewind the video a few a few minutes i enjoyed it i the the the, the name of, of frankenstein or the or the the character that was playing that was dressed up as frankenstein like he has He's, he, I'm convinced that he is something. Well, I don't know what it, what he is, but he is in that Agnes kind of uh, area. And we already saw that when he was in the episode where the twins were born, when he was cutting the wall. I don't know if it was a, it was just a saw or a, or a, or a hedge trimmer. Uh, you kind of felt that he was, he, I, I, that scene when, that I'm talking about the hedge, I, I, a lot of us thought he was possessed by something. He was short circuiting. But now after the Frankenstein, after when he, when he told her, uh, is there anything that I could change or you want me to change? I was like, oh, you're, you're playing that whole Agnes thing from the last episode where she was like, should we take it from the top? and stuff like that so he's aware so my mind thought that maybe they they ran a deal with wanda and they're not in so much pain that's why they are they are, they're playing along so if you play along with her with her illusion you're still gonna be in pain obviously because you're doing stuff against your will you're less affected or you don't feel so much pain and i thought it, i thought that at first but seeing the way Agnes reacted in the previous episode and the way he responded in this episode, it led me to think like, well, they, they, we all assume Agnes is. Now I think he is also as far as like, he's gonna play a, a bigger factor in things to come. So I'm excited where he's in the next three episodes where, where his character is gonna, develop and open up uh so i thought that whole interaction was great you know uh, it was funny a couple of scenes where quicksilver and one of the twins go around and taking all the candy as he's finding out he's getting talked to in his earpiece and they're kind of going play by play like hey all the candy's missing and now everyone has silly string on them i i love that part i thought, I thought it was great so we cut then to 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 vision walking the neighborhood and he's starting to walk too much like too far we don't know where he is he's but he's in a certain part of the neighborhood where you still see active kids running around but then you cut to a scene where he's staring at this house and it's a husband and a wife or or just a man and, and a, a woman i'm assuming they're a husband and a wife putting out decorations in front of their yard but it looks like they're glitching they're just going back and forth back and forth then you get a close-up to the woman you know doing her you know she's glitching like i said and you see a tear coming down her eye and i, and I, I was like no she is in so much pain and when we're seeing that as we in the for the last few episodes that they are in so much pain uh and even rambo told us that in episode four 
of, of what she went through when she was inside of the hex um, that Wanda had created. Uh, so it was it was it was a powerful scene and letting us know what what kind of pain they were in. And at this point, I still was like, you know, maybe there's a chance that it's not Wanda and it's someone else controlling this. But whoever it is is causing this, this much pain. I don't know why Vision didn't help, but maybe he was just in, a, in an explorer mode and he just walks up the street. Then we get our commercial break. Now this commercial break, I'm with everyone. I was confused as all can be. But I don't know if anybody remembers the 1990s or early 2000 cartoon. I think it was a cartoon where we had these mutant sharks. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name, but there were these sharks and they were all buffed out. It was a the late 90s, early 2000 cartoon. I had the name last night, but God, I mean, I can't remember now. But that's the first thing I, I thought about when I saw that and the whole Yo Magic part, it, I'm sure someone got it by now. I still don't understand it. The whole commercial was, I love seeing it, that transition where he gets the yogurt and we get the skeleton. I still enjoy watching that. I thought it was cute. Even the, the, the death scene is what I'm calling it was adorable, at least for, for my own uh, taste. Call me weird, but I enjoyed that, that little sequence. Um, but I didn't get it. I'm, along, I'm going along with the, the majority of the vote that I, I still don't understand it as of this recording. So then we, got back, we get back to the show and it's further on in the evening and we're catching up with Wanda and her brother and the twins. And again, just more, more questions and answers going back and forth from Wanda and her brother. And she recognizes that this Quicksilver doesn't look the same as her brother in Age of Ultron. And I get that part where everyone saying, yeah, look, look at her dialogue. She recognizes that it doesn't look like they don't look the same. Again, I think it's, uh, well, not again. I understand why people feel that way. But just like most sitcoms or even episodes and shows that did this, there are some that don't acknowledge it ever. But every time those shows didn't acknowledge a major character being recast in said sitcom, you would get a backlash. So, so it started being a funny thing when they did that. They would acknowledge it for an episode, get past that initial boom, and then go back into their storytelling. And that's what I think they are doing. Because they're only playing fun at it. Like when she says, like, I know I don't look the same. And she goes, yeah, why don't you look the same? That is just playing because the next question, they're just, it's, they, it goes back to furthering the storyline. I understand the X-Men plausibility. I just don't think it's, it's viable, in my opinion, anyways. So as the banter's going along, one of the twins starts getting, gets his powers and it's the same as his uncle, which led me down a weird thought process, not suitable for YouTube. I, I, it was humorous, but my mind, and maybe it's just my warped mind, took me down a dark path. But he gets his powers, and it was cool to see. I'm not familiar with the twins as far as the comic book, I'll be honest. I, I, I can't sit here and say, oh yeah, it's leading up to, I, I've heard, I've, I've seen some of the new Avengers or young Avengers ones, but not too familiar where I understand if this is, you know, going in the right way or if they're playing a farther plot and there's so many people thinking that there is such a thing coming uh, young avengers uh, uh to disney plus at some point which i you know I, I i get it it's a feasible idea but i haven't heard anything concrete i don't think but again i could be wrong so after that whole sequence we cut back to 
uh, what, what do we call these trios now? I mean, super spies, I guess. So we catch up with them and they're breaking into a sword tent where they have all these computer computer software and systems and just hard drives and whatever. It's just, uh, it should be more secure than what it is. But uh, just like every show, there's no security there and they managed to sneak in. Or maybe they just managed to beat everyone, you know, Chuck Norris style, all the way to this tent. But anyways, they go into this tent and they're trying to find information. So the, we see Tony Stark, I mean Darcy, connect her computer, hit a couple of, of keyboard, of keystrokes, and start downloading, looking at files, and getting all this, you know, information. Breaks in, and I, and I went into my anger in my review video. So again, go check out that video if you want to hear the breakdown of this scene. and Or not this scene, just what I think about this whole, how she's capable of doing all of this stuff. But she manages to bypass so many firewalls, so many encryption codes. She gets all this, lets Monica know about her blood and how it's changing and all that stuff. So it was just exposition scene, right? Filling in the gaps. So after this, we then get back with Vision and his, you know, uh, Vision the Explorer mode and going around the neighborhood and trying to figure out what's going on and he's starting to walk t you know in the prior scene i should have mentioned that our our three musketeers find out that they're tracking vision not wanda that that's he's he's tracking vibranium uh, at least the acting director of sword is because you know darcy hacks into his files and finds out everything. So we see Vision walking around the ass, like what is he doing, where is he going? That's when we cut to Vision and his escapades. And he's getting farther out of the city towards the barrier. As he gets towards the barrier, we see just a bunch of still kids, families, you know, children, mothers, fathers, brothers, just a part of town where, where they're in costume, they're in Halloween mode, but they're not moving at all. They're not glitching like the, the what in the prior scene where we saw Vision. They are just simply still. And Vision tries to interact with one and doesn't succeed. And so Vision decides to transmutate into his original form or just kind of phase into his original form. And then decide, and then flies up and checks over the the city, and how he knows where Agnes is is beyond me. But maybe he just figures it out, or maybe something is directing him towards Agnes. But he finds her in a car, just sitting in a intersection, and he gets to her. And we saw it in the promo video or the promo, the the episode promo where he taps her and kind of breaks her free from the spell. And I think she was acting. I think the whole thing that she was doing was fake. She was never out. The, the That touch that Vision did to her didn't do anything to her. Bring her in or out. I think she was fully aware at every moment what she was doing that led him to that scene. Now in the scene, I should have mentioned earlier that when the twins, when, when one of the twins got his power of super speed, Wanda told her to take her kid, uh, to take her brother, sorry, with, with him. And she goes, well, you know what, you know, uh, she does what mothers do. Like, you know what, what I told you not to do. And they were like, yes, we not to pass Alice street. I think it was Alice street, but anyways, where back to the scene where Agnes and vision, she's at this intersection. And sure enough, once, you know, Agnes leaves that, cause there was a, a, a bunch of conversation that i don't think really matters she was just saying that wanda doesn't let her it's, I, I just think the whole scene was misdirection the the more noteworthy part of it is that he is now at that street that wanda doesn't want her kids to go to and here we find vision the one that ultimately she is protecting and ha and wants to control at this very intersection 
and we see Vision just storm, just storm forward. And I was like, oh, yep, there he goes. He, and he walked with such determination and just the way he was striding, like he was mad and he wanted to get to the bottom of it. And I enjoyed that, that, that re really aggressive superhero walk that he had crossing the street. I, I, at least that's the way I found it. And I enjoyed that scene. So after this, we cut back to our Three Musketeers and Tony Stark is, I mean, Darcy is furthering the plot and letting us know that Rambo is going to evolve into something because her blood has changed because she's gone too many times in and out of the hex energy as darcy puts it so it's just more you know exp just more dialogue more plot that they're telling us but we do find out that whoever monica's connection or way back into the hex is coming over or is like an hour away and they're going to to meet a lot of people have you know started asking who it is as far as uh characters and we've heard like oh it's gonna be like the 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 i keep on wanting to say professor people will kill me or uh but anyways the um, i want to say professor four but it's not that but you guys know what i'm talking about the 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 mr fantastic God dang it so i think that it's not gonna be one he's if it is mr fantastic He's bringing all four. We're going to see off the, the whole team of Fantastic Four coming over and they're going to somehow get caught in this where I don't even think we're going to find out. That's going to be the big uh, mid season or end of season one reveal is that we are going to get the Fantastic Four in the MCU. But I'll leave that for another video because I think that they're the misdirect is that she's saying one person. I think if it is fantastic four it's going to be all four of them and that they're instead of space being the creation of their origins it's going to be this this event that's going to cause them to be not the first one but this is what's going to lead to them uh having their all their gene and or whatever's happening to rambo to also happen to them because they have this dormant gene to then create the what we all expect is the mutants into the MCU. So after that whole, you know, uh, dialogue, we cut back to Wanda and her brother and they are in the town square. And again, going back and forth, just he's uh, Quicksilver just asking more questions like, how were you able to do this? And he, he's trying to be encouraging like he's not he even make he even lets her know like, hey, I'm not judging you. I'm just here to like. To, to talk to like if you need someone to talk to i'm here like i'm not your husband i'm not here to judge you i'm just here's you know another pair of ears if you want to say something and she opens up when she opens up that dialogue where she says about her loneliness about the depths of her pain that i think people need to stop and fig and focus on that and i have a video that i'm working on that it's, it wasn't even tied to this episode, but that scene was a bonus for me that ties in to a theory episode that I will be releasing hopefully by tomorrow if I could get everything done because I've, I've been working on it. But the, f everyone needs to focus on that part where sh of how lonely, how hurt, and how just down that lonesome hole she was and what kind of pain that she is physically in and heartbreak is a f when you feel that heartbreak and many of you guys have felt it and it's not just with vision it's again we're seeing it with her brother there physically that's her first loss then we see it with vision that was her protector and fell in love with that uh, fell in love with him and then her other father figure that no one seems to, to mention was tony stark that took they took that took her into the the avengers facility and protected her after the whole thing after civil war even though she didn't she didn't recognize it but she had a home then all of a sudden he snaps everything gets you know uh thrown into the loop captain america's old there's i don't even know why, why she didn't go to the avengers facility 
uh obviously oh well it was destroyed did pepper build it up again was that reconstructed we don't know so it almost feels like uh, like wanda felt abandoned and who was gonna i have these superpowers everything's uh, thrown to a disarray we're told that this is a month away from the snap and all that stuff that happened during endgame so it's fairly quick where since this is all happened so we need to focus on that where she says that hey i i, I it was just loneliness and and you could see it in her expression in her face we need to focus on that part right there we, we have a quick cut to 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 darcy alone i should well before that the last time we saw the the dynamic uh, trio here our fbi agent and rambo going to meet rambo's connection darcy had to stay back because she said there was one more firewall that she couldn't get through but she knew that it was important and she needed to get it. And so anyways, that's why she's alone in this scene. And in this scene, we see her just looking at the screen and, and lets us know that Vision has reached the, the edge where Wanda has her, her field, her hex energy. That this is where the wall ends. And he, you know, he stares at it, but you see in his face that he's, he's not gonna stop. He wants to know and he pushes through and he pushes through and he and I, I didn't think he was gonna go all the way through but he does and i was just like oh no at this point i think we see the creation of the mind stone again and vision as as who vision is not with the memories he's not going to remember anything post nap i don't think or post not snap but post the gem getting taken out of his head but here we have the recreation of the mind stone and vision as an actual character with color i don't think we're gonna get the gray version due to the fact that what rambo told us anything that gets that comes out of the hex is real now he might be a different composition now than vibranium and we might get that later on that explanation later on he is definitely back and we definitely now i believe have the mind stone back in play uh and wanda created it just because of what rambo told us in episode two when she shot her outfit and it was made out of the bulletproof vest so as soon as he did that as soon as he came out i was like oh there it is we have vision this is the rebirth of vision or, or vision 2.0 if you will so as soon as you as he starts coming out and i'm excited to see him again you start seeing him flicker like parts of him start going away and i was like what the what's going on and we cut to back to the carnival and now we see the other twin developing or, or his powers are not being shown and he, he hears vision he hears his dad going through these pains and seeing glimpses of what's going on and stops stops his brother because his brother's going off fast and they go look for wanda and you can hear that you know they're they're panicking going mom mom and she you know they, they get to her and she's saying you know what's going on and he tells her like i don't know i could hear my dad he's in my head obviously his powers are now coming to the to, to the surface and we cut back to vision that scene where he's disintegrating was so beautiful the the graphic the the way it was all done whoever the the visual effects people that created that shot hats off to you work of art art piece the of, of just the whole thing i enjoyed the i mean it was visually stunning but i was so mad i was like get out of here i'm not a huge fan of the mcu character of vision the, the way his powers went up and down, the whole part that he was so weak in Infinity War bothers me so much to a T. So I'm in camp. I was on camp, uh, Hawkeye and and Vision. I was okay with going. And they could have kept Black Widow and, th and they could have just gone away with, with, you know, leaving Vision and Hawkeye could have sacrificed himself and I would have been cool with that. But when I started seeing him die again, I'm like, really, three times? 
my mind like the Kevin Feige must really despise the character of Vision to see him die for the third time. And I get that he's an android and he might not have feelings, but we do. We have feelings. I mean, do you guys not understand us as a human race? We feel for the dumbest things. We get we have sympathy for some of the dumbest things, but some of the great things too. But I mean, I get it. You guys might not have feelings, but oh, you were tugging at that string like really three times. We're gonna see Vision die three times. But anyways, we cut back to Wanda and she's freaking out. And here we find out for sure she is in control. There is no doubt. When she focuses and makes the town square stop still, there is no one else controlling that. That is that is Wanda in full power mode. You see her eyes open up and they're red. And that that power just goes from her center out. Come on, there is there is no more question as to who is controlling, whose power we're seeing in these uh, episodes up to this point. There might be someone manipulating her mind, but the actual powers of controlling the people of everything that they're doing is completely Wanda. Whether there's characters within this dimension that don't abide by her control and they might be a little bit more powerful than her, maybe. But as far as what we have seen, the creation of, the illusions of, and everything leading up, that, that scene where she, where she is in full-on, you know, uh, uh, Phoenix mode, or as some have said, you know, Magneto mode, or just full-on Scarlet Witch mode, and extends the hex to wrap Vision back in, to protect Vision, to heal Vision so he doesn't die again, or maybe... To not let him escape, you know, going back to the narcissistic control factor that we see from Wanda. Maybe it's, you know, keeping him in chains more, keeping him, keeping her under her control. Like we found out when he was arguing with her and I think episode, I don't know if it was the Brady Bunch episode or episode three, where he says, oh, you can't control me. And she goes, oh, can't I? Like, oh, really? You want to see how much I can control you? So maybe it's that where she knows that she, he can get away, but she doesn't want him to get away because she feels so alone. And this is someone else. Now Vision is back and now he's going to leave, not because he's dead, on, her, on his own free will. So that could be hurting her ego, hurting her self-esteem, hurting her. So she's like, no, I have to protect everything. That's why also she was on the twins. Like, no, you guys can't grow up. Don't evolve. Don't age yourself. Stay right here. I want to keep you guys with me as long as I can. So, but yeah, I think that we definitely see that Wanda is in full control and that scene where she starts expanding the hex and we see her transform the swords facility into a carnival kind of a setting or just a rural kind of midwestern city i don't know if it's modern or older it i mean you definitely saw like the used cars and stuff in some of the scenes like the neighborhood but everything that they were doing it felt like a carnival kind of a scene that some of the sword agents were transformed into clowns the the some of the uh, the helicopter was a hot air balloon uh one of the sword vehicles was changed over i think to an ice cream truck i don't know if necessarily at that moment wanda cared what she was turning stuff into she was just turning stuff into it was it was definitely with a a focus but it was a lot of the carnival but then i don't know why they shot this the, the when we saw the used car vehicles it just seemed like a midwestern kind of a town and then we shoot back i mean obviously the the acting director evacuated right because he was in front when there's when they saw vision coming out i should have mentioned that the acting director was there and uh, watching Vision come out. And he even says like, oh, you know, this is, you can see how much he really wants to get out. And when he's, you know, uh, breaking down and falling apart, Darcy comes out and, and runs towards Vision and s starts saying like, why isn't no one helping him, help him, help him, he's dying. And a sword agent grabs her and handcuffs her to like a Humvee. 
So when Wanda starts expanding this Hex energy, the acting sword director, you know, likes to add on to his dick uh, levels as, or, or just being annoying as hell on all of us, decides to just run away and leave her there, apparently. And he escapes, but sh we see Darcy get sucked into, as she calls it, the Hex energy. So we'll see where that episode, where what we'll, we find out next week in the in episode seven. But I'm super excited about what we are seeing. It left me on a cliffhanger. I didn't want this episode to stop. Those minutes go by so quick when you're watching them. You can't believe that it's over. And then you're like, that had to be like 15 minutes. And you realize that it's no, it's been like 30 30, 40 minutes in just in a blink of an eye. So uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. So I can't wait next week's episode and see what it has in store for all of us. So I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of WandaVision episode six. And like always, that's a wrap.